Hello, and welcome to the Peek and Poke Computer Museum in Rijeka, Croatia. Our museum houses over a thousand game consoles, computers, and all sorts of technological marvels from the past. But today, we are going to take a look at Sir Clive Sinclair's most popular microcomputer, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Although the ZX80 and updated 81 were commercially successful, both models were very limited and failed to truly capture the lucrative game market. Launched in 1982, the ZX Spectrum was Sir Clive's answer to a fully functioning budget computer capable of playing games. Sinclair Research claimed their own portion of the market by releasing the computer at the price of £125 with 16 kilobytes of RAM and £175 with 48 kilobytes of RAM. Users had the option to mail in their 16 kilobyte models to be upgraded at a reduced price but given the delays in shipping, inconsistency in operation, and the infamous BlueTack debacle, many opted for the 48K version up front. Built around the Zilog Z80 processor, seen in the 80 and 81, and originally codenamed the ZX82, the moniker Spectrum, nicknamed the Specky, was designed to denote the 15 shades, including seven colors, at two levels of brightness each, plus black. To anyone who has played games on the Specky, the color palette is instantly recognizable. Although there are many great games on the computer, with some estimates totaling over 20,000, with new titles still being released, the limited colors and sounds make games seem more elementary when compared to more powerful systems of the time. With any library so vast, it is impossible to convey a general sense of what was on offer for Spectrum owners. But two notable titles that everyone should check out are Manic Miner and Jet Set Willy. These may not be the best or most impressive games in the Spectrum's library, but they provide a brief sense of gaming on this machine. The Spectrums had many rivals to include the Auric 1, BBC Micro, and the Dragon 32, just to name a few. But the biggest and most hated rivalry that still burns today is with the Commodore 64. Both the machines, their parent companies, and the men who ran them were polar opposites. Sir Clive Sinclair was an affable English gentleman whereas Commodore's Jack Trammell, a Polish-born Holocaust survivor, was famous for his no-nonsense bullying business acumen. The Spectrum, definitely the underdog in this fight, had made some inroads in continental Europe, but its North American port, the Timex TS-2068, was upgraded in ways that rendered less than 10% of the Spectrum's giant library of software compatible, thus making it a commercial failure. Despite not being as commercially successful as its main rival, the Commodore 64, the Spectrum was still very successful and would be re-released in many different iterations over the coming years. Like all the Sinclair offerings, the Spectrum was a budget machine, but unlike the ZX80 and 81, the Spectrum was powerful and functional enough for upcoming programmers to create marketable games on. Sinclair's budget spectrum is at least partly responsible for the boom in British software development starting in the 1980s, and any limitations the machine does have, have over time become endearing trademarks of the brand. A brand that through various crowdfunded projects seems destined to continue to enjoy a faithful fan base for the foreseeable future. If you would like to see these machines, or the full line of Sinclair computers, come on down to the Peek and Poke. Call or email ahead, and we will try our best to facilitate a unique experience. If you like this video and want to stay up to date with the museum, please subscribe to our channel and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a great day!